Now it's time to start the opening session, Nursing Now Forum in Japan, hosted by the Japanese Nursing Association, JNA, and the Sasakawa Health Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. I am Noriko Saito, Vice President, JNA, serve as mod moderator for the opening session. We are now with you from the studio to hold uh, this uh, forum. So uh, we have a uh, detailed uh, infectious control to put in place. So we are uh, holding this uh, forum as Japanese event of the globally known uh, Nursing Now campaign. At first, uh, we planned to hold this event last May, however, the spread of COVID-19 led us to shift the event to this virtual event today. Nursing Now campaign aims at nurses and their supporting partners working together to enable nurses to maximize their potential proactively to work health issues and to contribute to better health of people. Japan launched in May 2019 Nursing Now Campaign Planning Committee consisting of 30 nursing organizations in collaboration with Japanese Health Ministry to conduct nationwide campaign. Today, those 30 planning committee member organizations and local prefecture nursing associations are participating in this forum from different sides, of course, with thorough infection control measures as COVID-19 is spreading in the country. In light of nursing now in this forum, we will have evidence-based discussion of nursing care, supporting people's healthy living and conducive to more efficient healthcare delivery and then will clarify social values of nursing. The concurrent sessions will examine specific examples of evidence and policy, home-based care and disasters. At closing session, we will adopt Nursing Now Nippon Declaration. Before all those things, I hope that opening session uh, will give you better understanding of nursing now, which will lead to good discussion at each uh, concurrent session later. We will appreciate it if you stay with us to the end of the forum today. First of all, I'd like to invite Chief Medical and Global Health Officer. Yasumasa uh, Fukushima, Japanese Health Ministry, to say a few words for this uh, forum. Uh, good afternoon. I am Fukushima, a Chief Medical and Global Health Officer, Ministry of Health, Welfare, and Labor. To mark the opening of the Nursing Now Forum in Japan, allow me to say a few words on behalf of the ministry. I would like to congratulate the organizers of the Nursing Now Forum in Japan, an event being held as part of the Nursing Now campaign. I would have liked to have greeted you in person, but to prevent the spread of uh, the COVID-19 virus, please excuse me for having to deliver my greetings virtually. I, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to those in the nursing profession who are striving to prevent the spread of the virus and to care for patients. I'm aware the Nursing Now campaign was launched to commemorate the 200th birthday of Nightingale and to raise the profile and status of nurses worldwide. Due to the pandemic, though the campaign was originally planned to end 
at the end of 2020. I understand it has been extended until June 30th, 2021 here in Japan. The year 2020, the 200th anniversary of the birth of Florence Nightingale, also marks the 30th anniversary of Japan's Nursing Day. The year 2020 was opportune to showcase the outstanding work of nurses in Japan to both those in Japan and overseas. Needless to say, the development of Japan's medical care and social security system owes a great deal to the contribution made by nurses in our country. One of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, set by the United Nations calls for good health and well-being of all people of all ages. I believe nurses play an extremely important role in achieving this goal. In Japan, uh, people are expected to live 100 years. Disease prevention, early detection, and quality of life after acquiring diseases will be required. Nurses come in closest contact with patients. They are in a position to recognize the condition of the patient. The role of nurses play that nurses play will become even more important. Nurses will not only contribute to promoting people's health, but also economic development. Furthermore, given the fact that nursing is a profession where, in many cases, women demonstrate leadership, nursing will also contribute greatly to gender equality. I sincerely hope that these aspects will be communicated through the campaign. I also wish each and every one of you will recognize the huge influence nursing has on society. I hope you will take even greater pride in your work that you do, and you wish you all the success in your career. In closing, let me pray that the Nursing Now Forum in Japan will enhance the public's interest in nursing and also wish for the participants good health and success in your career. On this note, I would like to con conclude my greetings. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Next, uh, we will have uh, greetings from the co-organizers. First, uh, Dr. Toshiko Fukui, uh, President of Japanese Nursing Association, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Toshiko Fukui, President of Japanese uh, Nursing Association. On the occasion of the Nursing Now Forum in Japan, I would like to say a few words. First of all, uh, in medical fields as well as in various uh, communities, uh, I would like to um, pay my ba uh, greatest respect to the healthcare workers that are combating uh, COVID-19, as well as the family members of those healthcare workers. Now, um, the fact that we can hold uh, Nursing Now Forum in Japan is due to the support by the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare, as well as the co-organizer Sasakawa Health Foundation, Nursing Now Campaign, uh, Planning Committee, participating members. Thank you very much. Now, originally, we had planned to have a physical gathering in May last year. Um, however, uh, we decided to have a web-based, a remote um, conference um, so as not to uh, spread the virus and uh, about 4,000 people are connected including those joining from abroad. Uh, we have not changed uh, the program. Um, the uh, prefectural nursing uh, associations as well as the member organizations of the planning committee, um, I feel very strong um, solidarity and ties with all of you. Now, Nursing Now campaign started in the UK in February of 2019 and uh, it aims to deepen the understanding about the the importance of nursing, which is highly public uh, in its nature uh, as a social function, and uh, we're trying to get appropriate evaluation as well as uh, investment in the promotion of uh, nursing policies. And um, in, with regard to the three goals of SDGs, namely health, gender equality, and economic growth, we believe 
and the report of the organization in the UK says that uh, we can contribute to those three um, SDGs. Now, the nursing, commu nursing community has been taking various measures. For example, Japanese Nursing Association has done a, a virtual run, and also education uh, institutions, uh, nurturing nurses, as well as uh, midwives, um, have also leveraged, leveraged various uh, opportunities to win the understanding of many parties um, uh, for the purpose of uh, nursing now. And uh, we have um, disseminated uh, um, this information um, to uh, the various entities, and uh, and also we have done uh, PR activities regarding visiting nursing as well. So please watch and t check out our uh, Nursing Now special website. And uh, with the support of the uh, relevant organizations, we will continue the campaign until the end of June. The theme of today's uh, meeting is Nursing Now, Creating the Future by Power of Nursing. Now, of course, in addition to the medical services that they provide, um, the uh, nurses are expected to uh, serve the local communities uh, to nurture um, health um, of the local people. And uh, it is not only um, during normal times, but in times of emergency, such as the COVID-19 pandemic that we're faced with, as well as natural disasters. Um, we um, understand nurses are expected to uh, serve their roles in those situations as well. And uh, we would like to address the global issues um, and think about what nursing can do, and especially deepen our understanding about uh, evidence-informed uh, discussions, uh, creation of the future by power of nursing um, is what we would like to um, embark on. And of course, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, shed light on the power of nursing. And uh, I hope that, that this forum will be uh, fruitful all of you uh, in nursing. Thank you. Next, uh, I will invite uh, Dr. Eitsuko Kito, President of Sasakawa Health Foundation, to give us a short remark. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Eitsuko Kito, President of Sasakawa Health Foundation. It's the highest honor for Sasakawa Health Foundation to hold Nursing Down Forum in Japan with uh, JNA on the occasion of bicentenary of a great uh, Florence Nightingale birth. 20 plus years ago, our foundation launched a training for palliative care nurses and physicians. We accomplished our initial aim of this project. And then since 2014, we have been supporting home care nurses to be competent for starting and managing home-based nursing center business, which serve as a hub center, coordinating a variety of professional cares for people living in their community under the framework of a community-based comprehensive care system in Japan. Already 17 nurses completed the training next year over 100 nurses are scheduled to work in local communities through Japan. We will present a part of the outcome of this initiative as a concurrent uh, session uh, following this session, concluding uh, my presentation. Uh, we honestly hope that today's international hall will give to highly uh, quality in nursing and nurses in Japan further opportunities to exchange with nurse colleagues in other countries. I want to extend my utmost respect to nurses' family tackling COVID-19 catastrophe in the world. Thank you. Next, we have three video messages from three leaders of this global campaign. First, uh, Nursing Now co-chair, Lord Nigel Crisp, um, WHO Chief Nursing Officer, Miss Elizabeth Iro and President of ICN, Ms. Annette Kennedy. My name is Nigel Crisp, and it's my great privilege to be co-chair of Nursing Now. And I'm delighted to have this opportunity to join you, albeit virtually, in your beautiful country, uh, which I have visited a number of times. Let me start, though, with a, a tribute, a tribute to nurses, nurses in Japan, but nurses throughout the world who have taken, borne so much of the burden during the COVID pandemic. I know this has been enormously difficult with people themselves being ill, 
worrying about your relatives, looking after your patients, having to deal with death more often than perhaps in the past. Um, but what I think has happened during this year is that the general public globally has seen just how effective and important nurses are, because you're at every stage from the testing through working in the community to working on the wards to working in the most intensive areas of hospitals. So let me start with a tribute to you as nurses in Japan and everywhere in the world. But let me also congratulate you as a profession in Japan, because I know a bit about Japan and I know how important is the role that you play and I know what a strong organization you are and I've met some wonderful Japanese nurses and Japanese nurse leaders. So really great to be talking to you now. I'm very glad that you're part of the Nursing Now campaign, which as you know, is about improving health globally by raising the profile and the status of nursing. And I, as a non-nurse, am very convinced that this is one of the biggest things we can do, is enable nurses to work to their full potential if we're really gonna see the improvements in health we all want to see. And you're part of a great global campaign. I mean, this really is global. We now have more than 750 groups in 126 countries. The last two that joined were Russia and Saudi Arabia. So we really are getting everywhere around the globe. Now the campaign itself is gonna finish at the end of May next year, May, 2021. Um, which will be a, an important date. It'll be when the World Health Organization meets. But there will still be a legacy. The campaign may, may, may have finished, but the work will continue. And let me just pick out three points about that, that work. The first one is that we are inviting groups uh, to uh, link in with the International Council of Nurses. I know that your, your nursing association is already part of the International Council of Nurses. Um, if you want to do, because they are going to continue to support and link with um, nursing now groups, uh, if you would wish to be part of them. Really important, they're taking this on. We've generated a lot of energy within the campaign, so it'll be good to see that carrying forward. A second very important area in which things will be developing will be in the World Health Organization. As you know, this has been the year of the nurse and the midwife, and during that year, the World Health Organization has published the State of the World's Nursing, which is a great database of what's happening in nursing globally. And it's gonna be followed up by more discussion next year and the development of a global strategy on nursing. So our other great partner of the World Health Organization is keeping nursing at the top table and uh, in focus next year. And the third area I'll just mention is the Nightingale Challenge. Now, as I, I think you probably know, we issued a challenge to employers of nurses everywhere in the world to support the development of young nurses whom they are, uh, employ. And what we found is astonishing. We've actually found that we've now got a Nightingale Challenge now involves 31,000 young nurses and midwives from around the world. And the development programs are not about clinical development, they're about leadership, they're about advocacy, they're about understanding the system so that you as nurses can be full all-round professionals. And it's about growing the next generation or two of leaders. It's been extremely successful. And as a result, the Burdett Trust for Nursing has decided to continue it for another two years in the first instance, but with a view to carrying on thereafter. But what a powerful force we've created. 31,000 young nurses and midwives linked up via social media. More next year, this will be a very great movement of nurses changing the world. So let me finish just by congratulating you once again on what you do day in and day out and on all the developments and innovations that you have created over the last year and long before that. I think we can look about the future with optimism. COVID, dreadful as it has been, has, I think, raised the profile of nurses. I think the year of the nurse and midwives has raised the profile too throughout the world, and we've seen investment in nurses in many countries. It's terrific that the World Health Organization leadership is very much supporting of nursing. So whilst we in the campaign fade out, you as nurses have the scope to develop even further for the future. 
and I look forward to hearing how you do that. Thank you very much. Greetings. I thank the Japan Nurses Association and President Fukui for the work you do in strengthening nursing and in, in extending a special thank you to all nurses and health workers for their leadership in the forefront of the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. When WHO declared 2020 as the International Year of the Nurse and the Midwife, it could not have been anticipated that this would also be the year in which an unprecedented global pandemic would occur. While COVID-19 has undoubtedly put nurses under even more pressure than usual, it has also brought into focus the work of nurses in a way not seen before. It has provided the platform for identifying opportunities and the challenges to advancing the nursing profession. We must capitalise on this. 2020 was a remarkable and difficult year for all of us. However, the nurses' profile nationally and globally were raised and their critical role in responding to health emergencies, health promotion and universal health coverage were acknowledged. At the same time, it also highlighted vulnerabilities and exposes nurses as they face risk, abuse and violence as evidence during the COVID-19 pandemic. We have reached the end of a remarkable and difficult year for all of us. The COVID-19 pandemic has imposed unique challenges, both personally and collectively, and disrupted many essential health services and highlighted gaps in many countries' health systems. Nurses are critical providers of these essential services, working either in multidiscipline teams or as lead care providers. We must keep them safe. As we consider the nursing priorities to strengthen nursing in the next five years, your contribution to the WHO Global Strategic Direction for Strengthening Nursing and Midwifery 2021 to 2025 is needed. This document is intended to provide countries with policy options that will enable the contributions of midwives and nurses to progress towards common goals like primary health care for universal health care and battling the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as to tackle country-specific challenges, such as mitigating the health effects of climate change, managing international migration, care for an aging population, or ensuring access in rural and remote areas or small island developing states. Governments and employers must make the investment in strengthening nursing leadership, quality education, and decent work conditions to ensure the appropriate number of supply and retainment of competent nurses in the health workforce. I wish you a successful meeting and may the new year be safer and healthier than 2020. Thank you. Dear President Fukui and the Japanese Nurses Association, it gives me great pleasure to bring you greetings from the board and the staff and your 27 million colleagues around the world that I see and represents. I know today you launch the Nursing Now Forum that you had planned to launch in May 2020, but because of COVID-19 and like a lot of other activities throughout the world that had to be canceled. 2021, this year, we expect to be a very different year. We are looking forward to the vaccination and to the elimination of COVID-19. In 2020, we had planned a great year, a year we would celebrate nursing because WHO had designated 2020 as the year of the nurse and the midwife. And it was the bicentenary of Florence Nightingale. So like you and a lot of our colleagues around the world, we had planned national, regional and global events to showcase nursing and to highlight the great role that nurses play 
in the health of the human race. But COVID-19 changed all that. The pandemic changed the world. It changed the way we live. It changed the way we work and the way we deliver nursing care. But what it did show was the indispensable role that nurses play in healthcare. However, you are now today launching the Nursing Now Forum, and I'm delighted that you can do so, because it will show the great work that nurses play. And based on what has been done last year in the nurses' curbing of COVID-19, society at large will know that without nurses, there can be no health care. All our nursing associations around the world showed great, great leadership during COVID-19. And so did the Japanese Nurses Association. You represented your nurses at government many times, seeking support, seeking PPEs, seeking counselling, seeking environmental support and help and better working conditions for nurses. Nurses were overwhelmed during this time and they needed the support of the National Nurses Associations. And we are delighted with the way that our nurses showed so much leadership. The Japanese Nurses Association shared all that information with us in ICN and the collaboration and their successes. And we appreciate that. And we thank you for the work that you have done for your nurses. I hope that 2021, and as you launch the Nursing Now Forum, that you will be very successful and that nurses will get the appreciation and the, and the status that they deserve, and rightly so. We look forward to great collaboration with the Japanese Nurses Association and with all our colleagues around the world for 2021. I'd like to thank all the nurses in Japan for all the work you do. We are indispensable as nurses, but we are not indestructible. And I want to make sure that you yourselves take care of yourself and your health. That is so important. We have lost many nurses during COVID-19 and many nurses have become ill and some have given their lives. We cannot afford to have that happen again. So I ask you to look after your health because it is a human right for you as well as for your patients. I wish you success this year and know that ICN are here to support you. Know also that we take on the legacy of nursing now in 2021, and particularly the forums and all the work that has been done in various countries. Thank you, and I look forward to meeting you in the near future. Thank you very much. Uh, indeed, for powerful messages uh, uh, from uh, Lord Nigel Crisp, Ms. Elizabeth Iro, and Ms. Anne Kennedy to push, to push forward the nursing professionals. We now like to proceed to the keynote lecture. Uh, today, uh, we have as a keynote lecturer, Executive Director of Nursing Now, Dr. Barbara Stilwell to talk about Nurses Rising, the story of Nursing Now as nurses meet the challenge of universal health coverage. And Dr. Barbara Stilwell, for the past 25 years, has worked on international health workforce issues first with the WHO based in Geneva, and then with Intra Health International in North Carolina. She has helped countries around the world to manage change 
and development in their own health workforces. In the UK, Dr. Stilwell is best known for introducing the nurse practitioner role in general practice. And in 2018, uh, she has become executive director of this world campaign, Nursing Now. Uh, due to time difference, uh, she will be delivering her keynote lecture via video. Hello, and greetings from Nursing Now in the UK. I'm delighted to be able to join you by video. I wish I was there in person, but I can't be. Uh, so this is the next best thing. And as we know, during this year of the pandemic, we've all had to begin to share using technology uh, and not using aeroplanes. And some ways that's good, isn't it? Because it enables me to be with you despite everything. You'll recognize a lot of people in this picture, I imagine. Uh, Nursing Now Japan has been launched and been working and been enthusiastic. Today, I want to talk about how we continue that momentum. How nurses can meet the challenges that lie ahead. Not only those that we've faced this year that may not yet be over, but the ones that are going to come to us in the coming decade as we seek to make sure our populations everywhere, everybody everywhere, has health coverage. You will remember that Nursing Now is a global campaign that started in 2018 with the aim of improving health by raising the status and profile of nurses around the world. We have been telling a new story of nursing. And that has been really quite momentous because we've been telling it in a year where all the attention of the world has been on COVID-19. We are a social movement and we've been enabled by social media. We haven't been organized in the sense that we have a very small core team, we don't give out money, um, we don't ask people to form groups, but the emergence of the groups, the way the groups have developed, reflects, I believe, that nurses are not content. They're not content because they're often invisible. And that's really critical. After this year, it's hard to imagine that nurses could be invisible. And in many ways, that has changed. But what we want to be sure is that what people see is what nurses and nursing really is. We're not superheroes. We behave with courage and we've had to, but we're human and we need salaries, we need good working conditions, we need careers and we need to be valued. Those are important messages as we begin to move forward. We have very strong uh, evidence about the effectiveness and the cost effectiveness of nursing, stronger almost than any other profession. And yet, policymakers don't listen to it. Why not? This is a question we need to ask ourselves moving forward. And globally, the nursing workforce is 90% female. So the state of women in the world is certainly going to affect the state of nurses in the world. So moving forward, we need to be looking at our place as women, as well as the men in nursing. This year, 
2020, which was the year of the nurse and the midwife, or is, is as I am speaking at the moment, saw the publication of the first ever State of the World's Nursing Report. In all its history, WHO has never focused on nursing in the way that it has in this past year. In some ways, it was a pity it was 2020 because all the attention was on the pandemic. And really, we could have done with a bit more attention on nursing. But we have to pick up where we are. And we have to take this publication, read it. All of you should read it and look at the recommendations. Because this is what will now inform the development of the strategic directions for nursing that WHO are developing with ICN and that will guide nursing investment until 2030 and will inform national policy. So we need to be very familiar with what's in the state of the world's nursing. It's good data and there's good data for every country. So you should know what's in there about Japan and what the future looks like for nursing in Japan. There are some key messages for all of us. First of all, nurses are frontline health workers in every country in the world, every country. They constitute over half of the global health workforce and 90% of patient contacts are with nurses. 90% of patient contacts with health workers are with nurses. So nurses are often best place. They're the best people to lead on health promotion, on illness prevention, so that people can better understand looking after themselves, creating their own health. And they're best place to do that because they not only are everywhere, they're the key workers over half of the health workforce. Um, but they're also um, essential to meeting the demands, the challenges posed by healthcare demands. So without nurses, we're not going to be able to get that breadth of healthcare that includes care to prevent illness, promote health, as well as look after people who are sick. That's the strength of nursing. However, importantly, in the next 10 years, the world will be short of 6 million nurses. That's going to be one of the biggest problems. Now, ICN have recently calculated that if you take into account nurses who are going to retire in the next 10 years, that means the world will be short of close to 10 million nurses. Where are those nurses going to come from? We know there's a problem with migration of nurses between countries. Um, we know that a significant number of nurses don't work in the country they were born in. It's certainly true in the UK. So all countries have to be planning to have an adequate nursing workforce. Is Japan planning that? Are you planning for a workforce that you're going to be short of nurses in 2030? Significantly short. And without those nurses, we won't be achieving health for all and we won't be achieving the sustainable development goals. No nurses, no health care. It's that simple. No nurses, no health care. So nursing now, nursing now has grown hugely since we started in 2018. February 2018, we had absolutely no groups at all and actually no intention of having nursing now groups. But you can see now by November 2020, we have so over 700 in 127 countries around the world. 
This is a true global movement. And the big advantage of that is that it means we are all in touch with each other, at least in theory, through nursing. Now, we can share our knowledge. We can share uh, innovation, development, um, support for each other. And those things are very important, we have found, um, in, in the way that um, our young nurses particularly make connections around the world. Investing in nursing is investing in health, it's investing in economies, and it's investing in greater gender equality. Hence, the triple impact of nursing. Nursing is a best buy in healthcare. It's effective, it's cost effective, and then it develops the economies by producing healthy people, but also by getting women, as it's mainly women, into the workforce. We would like to see more men joining nursing, but it's important, it's important that women do see a career path for themselves in nursing, and it does develop their own ability um, to be equal players. Investment in nursing is a best buy and should not be con considered a cost by policymakers. If we want to reach universal health coverage, health for everybody everywhere, nurses are key to doing this. And we've looked at the literature um, the evidence around this. And we can see that nurses can take on a lot of specialist care. Nurses can take on a lot of leadership, clinical leadership roles, which currently they may not be allowed to have. But we know, for example, in primary health care, that nurses, nurse practitioners, that's advanced nursing roles, nurse practitioners, can deal with 80% of primary care problems, 80%. That is so important. And yet, certainly in the UK and maybe in Japan too, when we hear about expanding health services, we hear about doctors being recruited, GPs being recruited. It's time to look at the workforce differently. It's time for us to look at the way we share our roles, we share the jobs that have to be done right across the health workforce in a way that's collegial, that we support each other, that we're not going to war about this, but we're looking at rational ways of sharing out what needs to be done. And we're allowing nurses to work to the top of their license, so to be to have the laws, the frameworks, the education that allow them to practice um, as, as an advanced nurse practitioners. And in that way, there's a cost-effective pathway to universal health coverage. So our goal in nursing now is to get this message out there. We want to change policy. We want to change it globally and we want to change it nationally. And we want to do this by sharing the data that's, that is available, by sharing the evidence of the impact of nursing, of advanced nursing practice, of having well-trained nurses on patient outcomes, on the amount of health promotion that goes in to uh, a consultation with a patient. So patients become better able to look after themselves. We want governments to increase investment in nursing. And the exact way they should be doing that is something you should be telling them. Do you know that the regional director for the Western Pacific is from Japan, Dr. Kasai? You should be lobbying, Dr. Kasai. You have a great entree, and you should be lobbying, Dr. Kasai, to raise the profile 
of nursing regionally as well, and to help you to raise the profile of nursing in Japan. That's what influential leadership's about. And we are, and as you will have seen, if you've joined with the Nightingale Challenge, that we are promoting influential leadership among young novice nurses so that they become able to not only talk about nursing outside nursing, but also influence policymakers to invest in nursing. So 2020 has been the year of the nurse and the midwife. It's been a celebration as much as we could celebrate and often the mood has been sad and exhausted because of everything that's been going on. The impact of COVID-19 on the visibility of nurses has been huge, as I said before. Um, we've been seen by many as superheroes. We've been applauded. We've been praised. But what now? What now, as we move into 2021, the year of the health worker or health and care workers, what's going to happen to nursing? And what's going to happen to nursing now? How do we make sure that those investments in nursing take place and continue? This is something that I've developed myself. This is something I've called the art and science of the possible in nursing. This is what nurses do. And I think it's a, both a strength and it's a challenge for nurses. We fill in the gaps. When, when it's needed. So if we see something needs doing, our sense is to do it. We look for opportunities to provide better care, to get close to patients, to do the jobs that, that we need to do with them. And we take on new tasks. But this can seem to people outside nursing that we don't have a science of nursing, that it's just incredibly adaptive. It just moves and changes. And that's actually not true. The science of nursing is the science of all medical sciences. We have to know about physiology, about pharmacology. We have to know anatomy. We have to know all of the things that you would expect pharmacists, doctors, physiotherapists to know. We have to know all of those as a foundation. What makes nursing special is that we have to deliver that within the art of compassionate care. And we all know compassion is very hard to measure, isn't it? Um, and you learn to be compassionate as you practice nursing. But we all know that to be really effective in nursing, you have to make a relationship with the person that you're nursing. And it's within that relationship that you find out what they want, that you can provide patient-centered care. So nursing is not only the knowledge, it's also the experience and the practice that is critical in developing a nursing expert. Florence Nightingale, whose birthday, bicentenary of whose birthday we celebrated in 2020, said this, nursing is a very serious, delightful thing like life, requiring training, experience, devotion, a power of accumulating, not of losing all these things. So what she's saying is, we as nurses, we take on every experience, every piece of knowledge, and it builds into our expertise as nurses. We can't lose any of it. And the critical thing for us is that when we're working with young nurses, with novice nurses, we have to help them to do this. And it's very easy, isn't it? Particularly now with pressure on the health services for us to become impatient. Um, 
not to be supportive supervisors, not to be teachers, but we need to remember this. It's a power of accumulating all of these things. And it's in this accumulation that we can become influential leaders. We remember Florence Nightingale for her lamp, which is really a pity because Florence Nightingale actually invented um, new ways of presenting data, pie charts. Uh, and if you look up the history of Florence Nightingale, you can see some illustrations of it. She was a very difficult woman. She would not give up. She took her data back to England from the Crimea and she persisted until she got the government to listen to her and to listen about the terrible conditions that the soldiers were in. And we've seen examples of that during the pandemic of, of nurses who have not given up, um, nurses who've been influential, who've really made a case, for example, uh, in Canada for long-term care homes and the staff who work in them and, they, and the people who live in them, that they needed better PPE. We've all had to make a case for PPE around the world and for PPE that fits and is there in, in has a good supply. That's being influential. And what we are moving to do in 2021 through nursing now is to have a political lobby to bring nurses together around the world to actually go to politicians, to take their manifesto, to take their data and say, look, you know, here we are, invest in nursing. If you invest in nursing, here's the payoff. So we need to become influential leaders. All of us need to develop our elevator speech, that speech that can go on for 30 seconds that really convinces somebody they need to invite you to their office to give you a chance to talk about nursing more. We need to be all getting good at that. We need to be using the data to create dialogue which informs decisions. The Nightingale Challenge does focus on creating young influential leaders and we have great hope in young leaders. We believe that we should be investing in them to prepare them for a different future. And the young leaders are different. They use social media in a different way. They connect with each other in different ways. Um, they have different aspirations for a career. And they're going to move around the world too. And it's important to remember that. So if we want to keep them, we're going to have to get very good at retaining nurses. So investing in young leaders is very important. And to reflect that, the Nightingale Challenge is going to continue until 2023, but it'll be called the Nursing Now Challenge. Um, and it'll be run by a university. But that's really critical. It's going to continue with the focus on young novice nurses so that we can keep them. So these young nurses can be enthusiastic and so they can sh bring other people into nursing because without that recruitment, we're not gonna make up that 10 million. So that's, thank you for listening. That's all from me today, except to say that I hope you will continue to be enthusiastic I hope you will continue to influence your politicians around the world. Nursing is a best buy in health. Please remember that. Well, thank you very much. So uh, she uh, presented uh, the, uh, what uh, nursing now is aiming at. Uh, that is a, a very powerful message to nursing profession. Thank you very much. So uh, profile of nurses is increasing as uh, the nurses are uh, tackling with COVID-19. 
one half of all the healthcare professionals are nurses. Without nurses, we uh, cannot have a healthcare, therefore, to uh, uh, make the best use of a nursing professional potential. It is very important to have advanced practice nurses, such as nurse practitioners. That is a very important message applied to Japan as well. So uh, based upon evidence, uh, also nurses uh, must do lobby activities to uh, the uh, uh, policy makers. This also will be covered by uh, Dr. Teshima's presentation and also uh, the relevant to the uh, theme of uh, uh, the uh, concurrent session one. So Mrs. Stilwell uh, uh, gave us uh, the uh, uh, very importance of the nursing lung campaign in order uh, for nurses to make a healthy society. That is indispensable a message for us. So uh, her message has a full of important uh, points uh, relevant to our uh, session. Now, beyond Japan, next we will uh, give uh, the uh, video of a situation of Nordic countries in Europe. Dr. Nina Hasela, President of the Finnish Nurses Association, will present us the year of the nurse and midwife in Finland, Nordic countries in Europe. She is uh, the president at the uh, Finnish Nurses Association. She has been working in healthcare for 24 years as nurse, nurse manager, senior advisor, scholarship researcher, head of health policy and development, and director of health policy and development. She now leads Finnish and European nursing as a board member of Nordic Nurses Association and the vice president of European Federation of Nursing Associations. Now, please watch this video. I'm the president of the Finnish Nurses Association. I'm also the vice president of the European Federation of Nurses. Thank you for inviting me to speak at your conference. In my presentation, I will tell you about the year of the nurse and midwife in Finland, in Nordic countries and in Europe. First, a little bit about the Finnish Nurses Association. Our association was established in 1925. We are a professional association. We unite nurses to support their capable expert profession and to promote their interests and high quality care. We have an active role on national and international level with Nordic, European and global partners. Many activities were planned to celebrate this year, as we had our own 95th anniversary and as the World Health Organization supported 2020 as the Year of Nurses and Midwives. The year started with a big hopes. We, we were happy to have the President of the Republic of Finland to write a greeting to Finnish nurses and midwives in our magazine in January. He was supposed to come to speak at our annual conference in March. But as we all know, the COVID-19 came and changed all the plans. At the Finnish Nurses Association, we thought that it is important to support nurses and give them a chance to tell how they are coping during the coronavirus at their workplaces. In spring, we conducted a qualitative survey and based on the results, composed a quantitative survey this autumn. Based on the results, half of the nurses considered changing jobs and 40% reported to be exhausted. Media has been very interested on nurses' well-being, but the government and employers have not been willing to pay any corona bonus for nurses. 
nurses are very disappointed as they feel that they have given all and put their health on risk. Then a bit about the uh, Nordic Nurses Federation. The Nordic, Nordic Nurses Federation joined Nursing Now. In 19, uh, 2019, we focused on mapping on the presence and impact on chief nursing officers and government chief nursing officers in the Nordic countries, which are Denmark, the Faroe Islands, uh, Finland, Iceland, Norway, and Sweden. We looked answers for three questions. What are the roles and responsibilities of governmental chief nursing officers in the Nordic countries? What is the impact of the government chief nursing officers in countries who already have the function? And how can we strengthen the roles of government chief nursing officers in the Nordic countries? Year 2020 was 100 year anniversary for the Nordic Nurses Federation. The anniversary conference was planned to hold in Denmark in September 2020. It was canceled due to COVID-19. The anniversary conference has been postponed until 2022. Then a little bit about the European Federation of Nurses. The EFN was established in 1971 to present the nursing profession and its interest to the European institutions based on the nursing education and free movement directives being drafted by the European Commission then. The EFN consists of National Nurses Association from 35 EU member states and it is the independent voice of the nursing profession representing over 3 million nurses. Within EFN, we have conducted a report on lesson learned from Ebola and COVID-19. The report outlines a series of policy recommendations for the EU institutions and the EU member states to strengthen our healthcare system and protect our nursing workforce. The message is, we are not prepared unless we are all prepared. What to do before future COVID-19 waves? To make sure that future COVID-19 are handled better, all EU member states and the EU institutions need to immediately tackle existing nursing shortages by recruiting more nurses to make sure that the patients and nurse ratio is sufficient, to put in place workforce retention measures to prevent more nurses from leaving the profession, to make sure that working nurses receive fair wages according to their qualifications, to invest in frontline nurses, both at the hospital and home care settings by injecting funds into the profession, to invest in the continuous professional de development of nurses is the key to make sure that the, they are prepared to tackle the challenges of the future. We have published reports on COVID-19 biological agent directive and on COVID-19 COVID crisis management at national level. Those documents are available on those links. Also EFN have joined Nursing Now. Our priorities uh, in, uh, on e EFN are nursing education for the EU directives and nursing-led clinics, workforce and skill compositions. As the year 2020 was very different and very challenging, we decided to arrange something joyful for our members in November. We had a virtual event with musicians, and again, we had the pleasure to have our president saying thank you for, for the nurses. 
I wish you a very good conference. Stay safe. Thank you. Nina Hatera Sama, Thank you very much, uh, Nina Hatera. So, uh, due to uh, the uh, COVID-19, uh, the variety of plant uh, events were cancelled. Uh, but uh, the, as she uh, spoke about, uh, they have initiative to support nursing by a European interregional collaboration beyond the country. Next, uh, we have uh, from uh, Chiba University Graduate School of Nursing, Professor Megumi Teshima utilizing evidence for nursing practice in Japan, from visible to visible. Um, after working as a nurse in a hospital, she served as a faculty at St. Luke's College of Nursing. In 1993, um, she engaged in research as a visiting scholar at the University of Minnesota. After finishing uh, the coursework for a doctoral program, she returned to Japan and she worked as the deputy director of nursing at Higashi Sapporo Hospital. And she has then become a professor at Chiba University since 2001. Please. Thank you very much. I would like to talk to you on this title. And uh, when I was studying at um, graduate school um, in the United States, I came across this book, and the first chapter, Nightingale, was introduced. It, it talked uh, not just about, um, well, uh, it was a course, but not just uh, for the nursing uh, students, uh, but um, students taking other courses. I was very proud of Nightingale. Now, looking at WHO's activities in the, from the 1970s, um, uh, they have been working to strengthen the nursing system. And especially from the 1990s, we see uh, that uh, they have tried to advance education. As for the utilization of evidence in 2012, WHO has published a number of reports. And ever since uh, we have seen ICN um, uh, um, publish a book um, publications on evidence-based approaches. And in the same year, 2012, in Japan, the JNA's Dinkle started. And in 2020, an update of the situation was reported. And uh, this report can be read uh, by downloading the PDA. PDF. Now, um, I've interviewed two hospitals. Uh, first, um, the Keio University Affiliated Hospital. Now, at Keio University Hospital, um, from 2013, they have set a five-year plan, and they are uh, trying to establish evidence-based uh, practice. And uh, they are continuing on with this effort. An uh, evidence-based practice team was established and are carrying out uh, these types of activ activities. Evidence utilization means that uh, trying to find evidence uh, which will be the grounds for a guideline and use the evidence and see whether it is effective. At Keio University, University uh, they have uh, the um, best practice research laboratory at the Faculty of Nursing and Medical Care. And uh, they, they are, as well as the Medical uh, School of Medicine's uh, critical research center start supporting the EBP team. Next is St. Luke's International Hospital. Um, in 2019, November, we received this information. ANCC, a certification association, is recognize um, St. Luke's as a magnet hospital. Now, St. Luke's Hospital in, in, in in December uh, 2012, um, have decided to challenge this and have embarked on this path. Magnet Hospital uh, tries to retain hospitals and provide high quality care. And um, uh, this Magnet Hospital um, re requires to satisfy these five conditions. And there needs to be evidence and go through screening uh, because it questions empirical outcomes. And St. Luke's um, was able uh, to uh, clear, uh, provide evidence on 87 of the items, um, proving that they are practicing them. And uh, one is uh, example was CAUTI, catheter associated urinary tract infection. Now, a nurse at a ward. Um, saw that there were frequent cases of uh, this CAUTI. 
and uh, try uh, to address the issue using a guideline. And uh, there are two things that were done. Uh, first uh, was uh, to assess and confirm through when changing shifts and consulting the doctor and having a bulletin to share the information. So uh, these initiatives were taken. And as a result, we see uh, in this graph uh, that um, uh, the occurrence uh, became zero. And this has continued to be the case. This was evidence uh, that proved that this approach was effective. Now, um, and uh, two hospitals um, did this, uh, but you might think it's because these are big hospitals that they were able to do it. But uh, from small hospitals, they say that they have limited number of samples and are unable to do this. Now, um, JNA uh, from 2012 have uh, been trying uh, to ensure the good health of its nurses and also to improve the quality of uh, nursing and uh, have introduced a database for improvement of nursing quality and labor. And uh, in, as of 2020, 431 hospitals, 4,258 wards are participating. And um, through advocacy, evidence-based advocacy, we were able to, for example, um, win uh, the introduction of a new insurance fee category for dementia care. And also, um, Dinkle. Um, compared to the incident data, uh, we saw uh, that um, uh, there were a number of incidents occurring um, which required physical restraint. But having advanced nursing in place, they were able to avoid uh, such problems. And we were able to persuade uh, the politicians. And uh, this insurance fee uh, category was introduced. We understand that it's difficult to obtain data, but um, there are more than 4,000 people participating in this and there are researchers and representatives from companies. We hope uh, that you will understand uh, that um, you will develop something where data can be easily built through just making statements. Now, uh, President Fukui um, held a news conference on December 22nd and explained uh, that there are a number of nurses quitting uh, due to COVID-19. She explained to the media what was happening. It was just before Christmas. It was a very important timing. And this led to the change of the public's mindset, I believe. Now, after the news conference, a Kyoto News um, put up this headline and uh, saying that at 15% of hospitals, nurses are quitting. And at um, those hospitals dedicated to COVID-19, the turnover rate is 20%. Uh, this is a crisis. And um, pe no matter how much we say that this is a problem, um, data was able to prove that this is the case. So these numbers told the story. Now, um, to summarize what I've said, well, um, I've interviewed two hospitals, and uh, both hospitals were saying uh, that um, it is important to use data to carry out dialogue amongst teams. Uh, for example, I explained about uh, the cat catheter example, uh, but um, for example, pharmacists are involved in uh, the drug uh, treatment, and also uh, we need to have other specialists um, in urinary uh, tract uh, to be able to do such things. And also, uh, data um, uh, can be communicated to all people across borders uh, uh, from the pub general public to professionals overcoming the language barrier. And um, lastly, about um, using data, um, WHO, ICN, and ICM held a web meeting in June last year, and a data dialogue and collaboration uh, was the theme uh, that was uh, taken up. They recognized the importance of data dialogue and collaboration. Uh, Dr. Barbara Stilwell, of Nur the executive director of, Nur of Nursing Now, uh, also uh, talked about this report, uh, but uh, um, it says uh, that 59% of the nurses, uh, of the healthcare workers are nurses. And WHO um, is endorsing nursing, they recognizing the importance of nursing. And in this report, um, it talks about the nursing roles in the 21st century health systems. And at the center, it says, nurses as part of multidisciplinary teams. As you can see, um, this, 
Um, these are the words of Florence Nightingale. A life is a war and is a fight with justice. 200 years ago, she struggled and demonstrated her talent to produce graphs. And this has led us today um, to uh, carry out the activities that we're doing now. We are not alone. We have a network where people can work together, and we can connect with people around the world. COVID-19 has brought about uncertainty, and because it's in times like this, we need to collaborate, use data, so as to create a healthier society. Nightingale Challenge. Nursing. If you look at the website of nursing now, you will see that JNA and Chiba University are uh, plotted on this map. Uh, and um, from March, you will be able to see this video, I'm sure. Um, so please access the site. And um, lastly, I would like to thank the director of nursing of the two hospitals that I interviewed. Thank you very much, Dr. Teshima. Um, she has talked about evidence-based nursing practice at hospitals and also the importance of utilizing data in advocacy. And uh, she's also uh, talked about uh, the multidisciplinary teams and um, using data uh, to hold dialogues amongst uh, the multidisciplinary groups. Next speaker um, is Professor Sui Hia Lim, Senior Director of Special Projects of the Executive Office of Sing Health. Health. And the title of the presentation is Community Nursing in Singapore. Uh, Professor Lim is a former president of Singapore Nurses Association. She actively shares and contributes her nursing expertise in many healthcare advisory committees, including local polytechnics, Singapore Institute of Technology, and Curtin University. She was also instrumental in helping Singapore General Hospital obtain the magnet accreditation, which was referred to earlier, which is the highest accolades for nursing excellence. Her passion for nursing and relentless pursuit in advancing the profession over the years has won her several international and national awards. So without further ado, I'd like to ask Professor Sui Hia Lim. OK, uh, good afternoon. Thank you, President of uh, JNA, for the opportunity to share community nursing in Singapore. Can you hear me? Okay, so for today's uh, sharing, I'll be uh, briefly go through aging population, nurses in the community, leveraging technology, and future of community nursing. Now, one of our biggest challenge just is the, the aging population. So you can see that, you know, in Asia itself, we are expected to spend about, by the year 2025, about 700 over billion as compared to currently about 200, uh, 200 over billion. So you can see this is a population pyramid for Singapore, Japan, and America in the year 2019. Okay, so what does this mean for Singapore healthcare? Uh, so the, our population is aging rapidly, and the diseases on the, is on the rise due to the aging population. And actually, the actual annual uh, healthcare spending is increasing, and this has led to slower workforce growth. Now, we have a low fertility rate in Singapore, and we want more babies. So as we have uh, fewer babies, there will be far fewer Singaporeans of working age to support our elderly. So we are bringing our health care to the community. Okay, just to share a little bit about the health care master plan 2012 to 2020. So where are we now? All right. So we are looking at the opportunities for all ages. Okay, so Singapore will be a place where all, where everyone, including seniors, can continually learn, grow, and achieve their fullest uh, potential. The other one is looking at kampong for all ages. So Singapore will be a caring and inclusive society that responds and embraces senior as an integral part of our cohesive community. 
It will be also be a city for all ages. Singapore will be distinctive globally, not just uh, for its economic success, but also as a model for successfully aging. So our three key strategies are beyond healthcare to health, that is to help and support Singaporeans to lead healthier lives, beyond hospital to community, to enable Singaporeans to receive appropriate care in the community and closer to home. Beyond quality to value is to give every Singaporean the best value while keeping our system sustainable. Okay, so how can we reach out to the community? Preventive health, direct home care, and of life care. So you can see here we have community-based services that is include daycare center, senior activity center, community rehab center. And the residential-based services will include community hospital, nursing home, inpatient hospice. We also have home-based care, like home nursing, home therapy, and hospice care. So a quick overview of our community nursing outreach. There are two arms. One is a pre fail and frail or has chronic disease. And we have a community health post at our community centers. We also have community nurse posts at our senior activity centers. For patients who elderly who needs who needs more complex care, home-based community outpatient parental anti-microtherapies is also available and hospital to home, where we provide basic and advanced nursing care procedures, specialized care management care and case management, patient and caregiver education and training are available. Now we also have program like you know uh, where we give uh, train our nurses to be a patient navigator. So what do they do? Formally needs uh, patients needs based uh, discharge plan and conduct their education, access suitable patients for community service while they are in the hospital. They also collaborate with multidisciplinary team and patient or family for continuity, review discharge plan and collaborate with MDT to right side our patients facilitate continuity of care between hospital and community partner. They also engage community partners and resources for follow-up care and support, partner social and other agencies for care for patients with high social needs, and they conduct timely post-discharge follow-up through phone calls. Now, I'm not sure whether you have heard of this uh, Sweden Esther module that is improving care for the elderly patients with complex needs. So in Singapore, we have this Esther network. And uh, so far, we have uh, trained 189 Esther coaches and 67 person center improvement uh, uh, project. And the goals for this uh, the Esther is to get care in or close to their home and to experience care from multiple provider as it is well from the same provider and to have care uniformly available throughout the region and to know to whom to turn to when problem arises. Okay, so for this home, hospital to home, before they are discharged, multidisciplinary team assess patients post-discharge needs and put together a personalized plan. And a post-discharge, a team will conduct home visit for those with higher care needs and call them regularly to ensure they are recovering well. And they also ensure coordinated and smooth transfer of care to community care providers after transitional care plan and the medical follow-ups at the primary uh, care providers. Our caregivers also need respite care. So we have these uh, services where like center-based respite care for our senior citizens, nursing home respite care for overnight stay. And uh, they can activate a uh, shorter time for a respite service. Okay, so how can we help our elderly who is out of, uh, whose contact is only uh, out, is out of home, especially during this COVID period, when they are not allowed to move around. So in fact, we have about 1,000 digital ambassadors. They are hired to teach digital skills to our seniors and hawkers. We also have community care apartment that is an available building in Singapore for our daily. Daily health is a way responding to the new needs of home care in the aging population. And this is to ensure continuity and safety of care for seniors and help patients to stay well in the community for as long as possible and to reduce the cost of care by reducing the need to travel to a face-to-face -face consultation. 
All right. So we have to, how do we meet the demand of the nursing future, especially the aging population? So we have community nursing clinical career map, and this is our community nursing competency framework. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry I have to rush through the slides just now because of the time constraint. So this is all I have. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor C here, thank you very much for your great presentation. It was very su uh, suggestive speech for Japan. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lim. Yes, um, it was a very valuable uh, presentation about the uh, community-based uh, care in Singapore, how to provide care to those who need care. Um, also in Japan, um, we need to think about this transition from hospitals to local communities, and so it was of good reference. Thank you very much. Next. Uh, we will have uh, Naoko Uchida, manager of uh, Japan Commun Community Impact. Uh, Johnson & Johnson, family of companies in Japan to present Tomodachi JJ Disaster Nursing Training Program. Mm -hmm. Ms. Uchida uh, joined uh, Yonsen Pharma uh, uh, Company Limited, now uh, Yonsen Pharma, in 2000. Uh, she engaged in clinical development develop activities since the Great East Japan earthquake. She has been actively engaged in social contribution activities in addition to her main business. Prior to uh, the present position, she was GXP, Quality Compliance Manager. She holds the qualification of a pharmacist. Now, Ms. Uchida, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Saito. So, I'm uh, Naoko Uchida, uh, from uh, uh, Johnson & Johnson, family of companies in Japan. Uh, thank you very much for giving us the, this important opportunity to talk about uh, uh, Johnson & Johnson's uh, disaster nursing training program. So a uh, slide shows today's contents of my talk. So uh, Johnson & Johnson uh, was established by uh, three uh, Johnson brothers in 1886, so uh, 130 years or longer history. So since its uh, onset, uh, uh, Johnson & Johnson has been uh, providing uh, uh, epoch-making uh, products uh, at, at uh, uh, including uh, medical uh, devices and pharmaceutical products and consumer products. We have a credo of Johnson & Johnson, which is a principle for uh, our company uh, since uh, it, their uh, uh, establishment. We have three stakeholders uh, of customers, uh, communities, and employees. So Credo stipulates uh, clearly uh, the uh, position of a company, the principle of the company. So uh, particularly uh, in this project, based upon uh, the uh, uh, responsibility for uh, the community where we live, we work, so uh, the, uh, helping people uh, to be uh, healthier, uh, supporting better uh, access care in more uh, places around the world, and uh, the, uh, uh, contributing the uh, community care and the education in the community. So we are uh, providing a variety of activities and the services. So a uh, pillar of uh, this activity is uh, a grant uh, project. Uh, so, uh, so we are uh, providing support to uh, NPO organizations uh, that we, which has a uh, uh, clear cut aim for uh, the uh, tackling uh, the uh, uh, crux of the problem of the uh, nurse society. Now, I'd like to give you uh, the, uh, our Tomodachi JJ nursing uh, training program. So. Uh, 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 since uh, 2015, uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, training program for uh, nurse, uh, nursing students. So, uh, 
So uh, uh, we'd like to support uh, the uh, Great East Japan earthquake uh, uh, damaged areas, uh, the, uh, particularly uh, the, uh, with uh, the health care. So we are having a, a very empathy from uh, the experience of uh, the affected areas of people. So we'd like to uh, uh, have uh, maintained our healthy uh, society so that uh, the, uh, we established this uh, the training, a nursing training uh, program. So uh, this is a Tomodachi initiative, uh, which is a collaboration between our, our American embassy and the public-private partnership uh, the, of American uh, embassy and the U.S.-Japan Council. So. Uh, so uh, the, we invite uh, nursing students to visit, uh, the, uh, for example, military hospitals. Uh, usually, uh, uh, we are not able to visit. So not only uh, the, uh, uh, we are aiming at uh, building uh, expertise as uh, nurses, uh, but also uh, we are uh, uh, to try to make a difference on the mind of nurses uh, so that uh, those nursing students, uh, end of the day, will uh, uh, have a uh, capacity to lead uh, the nursing and, and also society in the future. Uh, this uh, the, uh, program composing uh, three uh, uh, the parts, uh, pre-training and uh, training in the United States, and also the post-training, uh, uh, which is a briefing uh, uh, session. In this training, the students uh, uh, will be trained uh, to uh, think by themselves independently. If you have a time, uh, please visit our site, the Tomodachi Initiative. So uh, this slide is a uh, uh, process of uh, the uh, U.S. training. Uh, it uh, takes uh, uh, two weeks. Uh, uh, students are visiting in New York, New Jersey, Washington, D.C. So new, uh, the U.S. Uh, experienced a uh, hurricane uh, as well as uh, uh, the, uh, the terrorist attack. Therefore, the students are uh, uh, having some learning from uh, the, uh, those uh, the U.S. Uh, experiences. So uh, those students, uh, uh, trainee uh, students, uh, think about how uh, they are learning uh, put into uh, their uh, community activities. What they learn should be translated into their own community, and what kind of learning they have shared, so how they should develop their learning into further their contribution to the society. Those are also will be presented by the each. Uh, trainee in the briefing session. In this case, uh, the, uh, also our staff uh, joined the briefing session, uh, and on the, that occasion, uh, the, our staff learned a lot. So uh, 43 uh, students participated so far uh, in this uh, JJ project. In the first, uh, uh, the, those students are, are the ex experienced the Great East Japan earthquake, but the, the, uh, uh, that the candidate uh, was expanded. Now uh, the, uh, we are covering the entire uh, uh, the country uh, as well as uh, uh, graduate at the uh, school of students, and also not only uh, those trainees, mentors are very important. Mentors or uh, the uh, professors from variety of universities. Uh, the, uh, those names are presented on this slide, and the nine mentors already participated in uh, this project. On this occasion, I'd like to extend my heartful appreciation to those uh, nine mentor, uh, mentors. So uh, those are the, uh, the contents of uh, the, uh, our Tomodachi JJ uh, nursing training program. So uh, the, uh, those nursing students uh, uh, have an opportunity to think about what uh, the nursing should be in the uh, disaster uh, uh, setting and uh, uh, responding to uh, the, uh, uh, that kind of important uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, instance. And uh, the, uh, if they will be competent, with, which will lead to uh, the uh, very good society. So Johnson & Johnson, uh, based upon the, our creditor, 
Uh, so uh, we'd like to have an endeavor to uh, be uh, at the healthcare company uh, contributing to the U.S. society, which is fair and sustainable. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ms. Uchida, for presenting disaster nursing training program. Disaster preparedness is extremely important in Japan. A private company supports the practices and the activities of nursing professionals. Nursing Nurse Campaign states clearly that it is important for nurses to cooperate, uh, to, uh, collaborate uh, with other relevant stakeholders. In the op opening session, we uh, had an, uh, uh, four presentations. I think all the uh, messages were very relevant for us to continue to promote our Nursing Now campaign. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the uh, speakers. And um, now um, uh, we would like um, to take some of the questions uh, that have been sent to us. Well, um, uh, to Professor Teshima, um, there's a question to you. Well, at um, the hospitals, um, uh, in order to link the evidence to collective hospitals uh, to policy making, I think we have to raise our voices. Um, so where uh, should we coordinate the data and evidence? Um, can you give us some ideas as to how to collect and coordinate the evidence or data that has been connected? Thank you very much. Um, yes, um, the Japanese hospitals, um, only 20% or so of the hospitals have 300 beds or more. So many of the hospitals have less than 300 beds. And given uh, this reality here in Japan, for example, um, JNA have or has already started um, uh, this um, um, link that is already in place. Um, so each of the nurses um, um, have to become a member of JNA and provide data uh, to uh, JNA. And from there, I think uh, this will build up uh, the voice of the nurses. It's not just hospitals. Uh, for example, the visiting nurses, um, stations, and there are other um, medical or nursing institutions uh, that we have to take into account. And the key will be how to collect all this information, how uh, to try to use uh, this information to carry out advocacy. And the nurses uh, need to first join JNA and um, take part actively in the surveys being carried out by the association. That will be the starting point. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, members, uh, we have uh, um, some 1.66 million, of which uh, uh, 750,000 are members of JNA. Um, so of the total 1.66 million, only 750,000 are members of JNA. So we have to increase the membership. And we've also uh, received um, a question, uh, well, um, saying uh, that um, in Finland, the president has um, get delivered a message to the nurses, and this is the student nursing is recognized um, in Finland and then this should be replicated here in Japan. And uh, this was just a comment, not a question. Uh, but also, uh, Dr. Stigwell, um, Stig, uh, Stilwell, yeah, yes, um, uh, the people have come to recognize that um, it is very important um, um, that um, nurses recognize the importance of their role. Or um, um, this was a person who uh, said uh, that um, um, Nightingale's words um, uh, of um, Self-sacrifice um, is something that really um, is uh, moving. So we've received a number of comments and questions uh, from the audience. And uh, to all of you who've taken part in the opening session, and also those of you at the public viewing sites, venues, I th we thank you very much for joining us. And um, with this, we would like to conclude the opening session. Once again, we thank you for joining.